The transport sector accounts for 21% of global carbon dioxide or CO2 emissions. Road transport makes up a huge 75% of these emissions. The world is scrambling to cut greenhouse gas emissions and tackle climate change by limiting global temperature rises to 1.5 degrees Celsius this century. One way some governments are planning to do this is by phasing out polluting petrol and diesel cars and even hybrid cars in favour of all electric vehicles or EVs. But is this really the best solution for the environment? Well, the short answer is yes and no. So what exactly are EVs and how are they different from conventional petrol or diesel cars? So a regular vehicle uses an internal combustion engine. You take fuel, you combust it, and you produce energy to make the car go. An electric vehicle, you have a battery where the energy is stored, and then that battery powers um, an electric motor. And of course, that battery also has to be charged with electricity. The main reason why they are better than internal combustion engine powered vehicles is that they have zero emissions. In particular, zero tailpipe emissions, which means no local emissions. As you know, what comes out the tailpipe of a vehicle that's powered by an internal, internal combustion engine uh, can have effects on, on, on you know, two main pillars around this. Is one is the greenhouse gas it emits, which affects climate change. And then the other is air quality with toxic fumes. But while electric vehicles produce zero tailpipe emissions when driven, this doesn't mean they produce zero emissions during their whole life cycle. That's why it's important to look at the life cycle analysis of electric vehicles rather than just their use stage. The batteries that power EVs need raw materials, which are extracted from the earth. These materials include lithium, cobalt, nickel and copper, among others. The extraction, refining and delivery process requires heavy machinery so it uses a lot of energy, which produces greenhouse gases. Once delivered to the production factory, these materials need to be made into batteries, which is also energy intensive. In fact, 50% of the emissions from battery production come from the electricity used in manufacturing and assembling the batteries. The latest research estimates that battery manufacturing emissions are actually between 61 kilograms and 106 kilograms of CO2 equivalent per kilowatt hours of battery capacity, depending on the source of the energy. Then, assembling the rest of the car involves a similar energy intensive process on the assembly line to conventional petrol and diesel cars. Once an EV hits the road, unlike an internal combustion engine vehicle, it doesn't emit greenhouse gases or air pollutants through the exhaust because, well, it doesn't have one. However, emissions are produced from electricity generation in power plants, which is what an EV uses to refuel when plugged into a charging point. This is the stage where the least emissions are released, but disposing of the battery or car parts of an EV in a landfill or through incineration can have a negative impact on global warming. But some of these materials can be directly reused or recycled, which helps in other life stages of an EV, such as sourcing raw materials. So a medium-sized EU average electric vehicle emits a total of 90 grams of CO2 emissions per kilometer or 20 tonnes of CO2 over its lifetime. Whereas an average petrol car in the EU emits 253 grams of CO2 emissions per kilometre, or 57 tonnes of CO2 in the same lifetime. And a similar story for the average diesel car, with 234 grams of CO2 emissions per kilometre, or 53 tonnes emitted in its lifetime. So, while building an EV is about 1.5 times as carbon intensive as building a comparable conventional vehicle, when you look at its entire life cycle, 
Researchers agree that an EV today is at least three times better in terms of CO2 emissions. Once you have driven 25,000 kilometers with an electric vehicle, you have a balance in terms of carbon footprint between what it costs you in terms of CO2 emissions to manufacture the vehicle and drive 25,000 kilometers. And from that point onwards, you are emitting much less over the life cycle of the vehicle than the uh, equivalent diesel or petrol car. But while these figures are the average today across the EU, emissions can vary widely depending on the energy mix of each particular country. And crucially, this is very important, the electric vehicles will become better with time because um, as the European Union economy decarbonizes and therefore the systems used to generate power, the power generation sector decarbonizes as well, the CO2 footprint of an electric vehicle will keep going down. You know, on the transport side, we found that basically from the levels, and I'm talking about all transport sectors across the globe, from the levels that we're at today, by 2050, the CO2 emissions from transport have to be about 78% lower than they are today um, in order to meet those climate goals. Scientists and climate campaigners say that while pushing for electric vehicles is a step in the right direction, it still produces emissions and is not enough on its own. Of course, electric vehicles are definitely not the silver bullet. It, it, it would be too easy. That's why having the net zero goals is very important. And we can definitely achieve uh, a zero emissions transport system if we start betting or more li on more livable cities so that people can walk more, cycle more, share uh, transport. So that means using public transport, but also micro mobility, multimodal mobility solutions in cities.